Danny Daly here. This video is the established comic franchise's rise in value. The established comic franchise's rise in value. I was watching um, 7-2, Channel 7-2 here in Australia yesterday and uh, Porn Stars was on. And, um, you know, P-A-W-N, not P-O-R-N, that's rude, rude, but P-A-W-N stars, people pr probably know the show about this, uh, this family of guys, for the most part, who run a, a pawn shop, and they buy expensive items a lot of time, and sometimes they go off and the, the main guy goes off on holidays and buys big ticket items. And they were uh, they were in a place in, uh, in America. Where it was a gun prop store and uh, providing for Hollywood. And the bloke brought out Han Solo's gun, of all things, from the first Star Wars movie. And it was, it was cobbled together from a number of guns and it was... It wasn't actually a, technically called a laser gun. It was regular enough sort of gun by the looks of it. And um, the asking price the bloke had for it from this prop store, because they owned it, it had actually been leased or hired to the Star Wars movie, was a million dollars US. And I, I remember I was there at the time watching the show and thinking, come on, dude, that, that's Han Solo's gun. The amount of Star Wars geeks and fans out there, if you know what I mean, that's cheap. And it turns out that one, the one from the f second or third movie had sold at auction in recent times for half a million dollars US. And the estimated price of the, the, the one from the first movie was, from the expert, about a million dollars US. So the bloke didn't buy it because it was just out of his league, but... Uh, Something which proves a point, isn't it? Fans, their obsessions, and the prices they're willing to pay. The prices they're willing to pay. The established comic franchises, something like Daredevil, which is generally established well enough and just endures or something like the star wars comics and even something like archie which just keeps on going and of course x-men and spider-man and batman which tends to rule for the most part and superman and justice league avengers wonder woman flash green lantern and people in the know can generally name probably a good 50 or so comic franchises which seem to have been around for a while and gone the distance. And when they've been established and around for a while and gone the distance, there's one thing about the issues, the comic issues, that invariably, as they get older, they tend to rise in value. I was thinking that if I was to ask the YouTube comic community who produce all these comic videos about this issue, can we guarantee a bloke that if he buys a certain number of these hot number ones, they're going to rise in value? Some of them are going to click and rise in value over 50 years to probably even even a million dollars worth of comic in today's money in 50 years. Now, there's nothing we can absolutely guarantee in life, but I was thinking to myself, you choose wisely, you, you can guarantee that it'll probably be the case. One or two of them will probably hit that sort of value. Recently, one of the guys, I think it was Reaper Tate or something, said, 
crazy comic prices, especially during lockdown and stuff like that. It was prices were going through the roof, but for these established comic franchises, some of those keys that just going up in the long term. So basically what I'm saying, it just appears to be the case that the long-term investment potential is extremely strong on established commodities for earlier key issues, first appearances of key characters in the franchise, and that the only way is up. Get them now if you can.